per month. DMX is coming. Just call us today. This is CNN. This is Newsnight, reporting the events that will shape tomorrow. Some of you heard that I had tested positive for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. That is indeed the case. Hello, I'm Jonathan Mann. Susan Rook is off tonight. Among the stories we're following, how home video games like Nintendo can help some doctors get better at their jobs, plus fresh pictures show Yasser Arafat is alive and well after a crash landing. But topping our news tonight, tennis great Arthur Ashe reveals a secret he's kept for more than three years. Ashe announced today he has AIDS. He says he's 100% sure he acquired the disease through a blood transfusion, probably after double heart bypass surgery in 1983. That was two years before blood began to be routinely screened for the AIDS virus. Ash said he learned he was infected in 1988 when he was diagnosed with toxoplasmosis, a brain infection considered a sign of AIDS. In general, I am not sick. I live a very normal life. I can, wa I can play 36 holes of golf and walk. Uh, I can... Uh, do just about anything any of you all in here can do, unless you happen to run in the New York Marathon. So, uh, and that, I think, is also the message that Magic Johnson was getting out. I mean, purposefully, he went out to shoot buckets and say, look, I'd like to play on the Olympic team, but I'm thinking about maybe even playing and coming back, playing for the Lakers. Yes, he's HIV positive, but it ain't the end of the world. Ash is a two-time number one player in men's tennis. In 1975, he became the first black man to win Wimbledon, and he won the first U.S. Open in 1968. He retired after he suffered a heart attack in 1979. Ash's announcement drew sympathy and support from his colleagues. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. I was crying all morning thinking about it, identifying with him, and having total empathy with him. And um, probably the more I think about it, I'll probably get angry to think that someone has to further their career at somebody else's suffering. I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I, I got sad right away. Suddenly I said, well, I guess it's not that serious. I just hope that after, like, you know, all the great athletes that we have had in this, our great country, well, he recovers soon enough because, you know, we need him. He's a great boy for tennis. He's done great for the game. Ash said he would have preferred to keep his condition secret. He came forward only after a newspaper tried to confirm a tip. CNN's Charles Feldman reports the situation raises questions, questions of ethics among the media. The news that former tennis star Arthur Ashe has AIDS is no doubt a shock to most of his friends and fans. At his news conference in New York, Ashe indicated he was shocked that USA Today, in Ashe's words, forced him to go public. After several days of checking it out, USA Today decided to confront me with the rumors. It put me in the unenviable position of having to lie if I wanted to protect our privacy. No one should have to make that choice. I am sorry that I have been forced to make this revelation now at this time after all i am not running for some office of public trust nor do i have stockholders to account to it is only that i fall under the dubious umbrella of quote public figure but usa today editors have a far different take on the story the paper's managing editor for sports coverage says Ash is indeed a public figure and that the fact that he has a serious illness is news. Uh, any public figure has a heart attack, uh, has a cancer that could prove to be fatal, is critically injured in an auto automobile accident, or has AIDS, which by all stretch of medical information I've seen that I think uh, exists is, is fatal, uh, then that's news. And Mr. Ash is by anybody's definition a very significant public figure in our country. And indeed, 
we waited for his personal confirmation before we published anything. The key issue seems to revolve around Ash's contention that he is no longer a public figure, subject to this type of very personal media scrutiny. Former Columbia University Journalism School Dean Osborne Elliott says a former tennis pro may be stretching the bounds of public domain. If it is true that he was forced by journalists, uh, he was outed, so to speak, by journalists, I think it's inexcusable. I mean, I just don't think this is what journalism should be all about. And uh, I think it's a, a sad day when uh, uh, a privacy is invaded to the degree it has been uh, in this political season, as well as in this particular case involving Arthur Ashe. Too bad, I think. At his news conference, Ash said he doesn't blame USA Today for pursuing the story after receiving a tip, but says he feels he is now a victim of the person whom he says ratted on him. Charles Feldman, CNN, New York. We'll have more on Arthur Ashe's story in about an hour. Stay with us for a CNN special on his announcement and reaction to it coming up at 1 a.m. Eastern. He may be bruised, but advisors expect PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat will be well enough to preside over a PLO Central Council meeting tomorrow. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi visited Arafat's bedside today. Arafat, who has survived decades of fighting and several assassination attempts, suffered only minor injuries after his plane belly landed during a sandstorm in the Libyan desert yesterday. The aircraft broke into three pieces. Three crew members died in the emergency landing. Joseph Mengele, the Nazi whose crude genetic experiments on concentration camp victims earned him the nickname Angel of Death, has finally been tracked down by genetic testing, although posthumously. In Germany, state prosecutors said British scientists used genetic fingerprinting to match a bone sample from the body to a blood sample from Mengele's son, Rolf. The body was exhumed in 1985. Mengele had escaped to Brazil and assumed the name of Wolfgang Gerhard. He drowned in 1979. Mengele killed and maimed thousands of Jews and others at Auschwitz. Just ahead on Newsnight, why some medical experts say if you want to take something for your cold, there are better bottles to take a nip from than these. We went out in the woods and we found him, but he was dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Anybody got a live dog? <laughs> And out of the mouths of babes, some deadly comments turned President Bush's photo op into a flop. Newsnight is brought to you by Dollar Rent-A-Car. Right on the airport, right on the money, across America and worldwide. I was already late for my meeting when my flight landed. Lucky for me, someone left a courtesy call. I had to get the dollar rent a car pass. I knew they were right on the airport with low rates. Welcome to Dollar. Hello, I have a car rental reservation. No problem. I'll just punch it up on the computer. Dollar rent a car is right on the airport, right on the money, with unlimited mileage and locations worldwide. Call your travel consultant or Dollar at 1 800 800 4000. Buick introduces the new supercharged Ultra for 1992. With 20% more power. 205 horsepower to be exact. Ultra truly ranks among the world's finest luxury performance sedans. The new 1992 supercharged Ultra from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America. Most weeds have unusually deep roots. If you don't get the whole root, they grow right back. So use Scott's Turf Builder Plus 2 Weed and Feed for a great lawn without weeds. From Scott's, we guarantee it. I'm not going to buy just any tire. Before you buy new tires, test these first. Bridgestone Road Handlers from Sears. Drive them anywhere for a thousand miles. If you're not convinced Bridgestone Road Handlers are the best tires you've ever driven, Sears will replace them free. When they say it's guaranteed, it's guaranteed. Now at reduced prices, Bridgestone Road Handler, backed by Sears Lifetime Free Replacement. Who's going to back you better than Sears? Bill Clinton waded into a bitter labor management battle today after winning all of yesterday's Democratic presidential primaries. Clinton met with both sides at a Caterpillar factory where union workers are on strike. 
He said the Clinton administration would be working to resolve the strike. He criticized President Bush for not trying to settle it. Jerry Brown says he's not ending his campaign despite his disappointing third place finish in New York yesterday. Brown campaigned in Virginia, which is holding its caucuses this weekend. He said he's also looking forward to the Pennsylvania primary at the end of the month. Paul Songa spent much of the day analyzing his second place showing in New York, where he got almost 30% of the vote. Songus will announce tomorrow whether he will re-enter the race. CNN will carry that announcement live at 10 a.m. Eastern. President Bush today learned a lesson that every actor knows. Never share a stage with children or animals because they'll always steal the spotlight. CNN's Jill Dory reports. It was supposed to be a morning of presidential photo opportunities. First event, a walk through the cherry blossoms near the Jefferson Memorial. Bright and early. Wait till the sun comes up. <laughs> but the president and Mrs. Bush ended up hearing at the blossoms in near darkness, arriving at the break of dawn so they wouldn't create a rush hour traffic jam for tourists and commuters. Then back to the White House to read a children's story, Harry the Dirty Dog, to first graders from St. Peter's Catholic School on Capitol Hill. <laughs> the president's own dog, Ranger, was there, a dirty Harry in his own right, said Mr. Bush, digging for mice and even killing a White House rat. But then the ideal photo op took a U-turn as Mr. Bush asked the children about their own dogs. Four children said their dogs had died or were ready to. It was a moment calling for all the diplomacy a president can muster. Anybody got a live dog? But Mr. Bush found another subject, cats. My own cat, you know what, they both died. <laughs> Mr. Bush tried to change subjects, telling how many years ago he pulled his little daughter's tooth by tying a string to a doorknob and slamming it. But one boy topped that with the story of his father using a pair of pliers to do the same thing. Sometimes, even a president can't win. We'll see you. Bye. Ranger and I are leaving. Jill Doherty, CNN, The White House. White House fat may soon hit the fire over new reports of perks for the privileged few. According to Thursday's New York Times, Vice President Dan Quayle used military planes several times in the last two years during trips with Samuel Skinner, mostly to play golf. One trip last May caused a furor because John Sununu was already in hot water for using government planes for personal and political trips. Federal Budget Director Richard Darman was questioned about White House perks during a Senate hearing today. He promised to provide dollar figures for such perks as planes, cars, meals, and memberships in fitness centers. Darman says he's given up his own government car and driver because it was a troubling symbol of privilege. But he says the presidential plane is strictly off limits to cost cutters. I think the public understands that the president, as commander-in-chief and as head of the nation, uh, has some functional requirements, which no one else does. He also has uh, continuous responsibilities, which no one else does. And what I think offends the public is when lesser officials, including characters like me, OMB directors or others, are running around pretending that they too should be entitled to some of these uh, privileges. Are there it costs an estimated $25,000 an hour to operate Air Force One. The White House pays just the equivalent of a first-class commercial fare when the president goes on a political trip. The judge in Manuel Noriega's drug trial is refusing to accept a hung jury. The foreman sent the judge a note today saying a single holdout juror has deadlocked deliberations and that, quote, we feel we're wasting time. The judge ordered the panel to keep trying to reach a verdict. The expensive, complicated trial began seven months ago. A Philadelphia man with AIDS who's accused of sexually abusing teenage boys has had his bail lowered, but an attorney for Edward Savitz says dropping his client's bail from $20 million to $4 million is basically the same as holding him without bail. The judge ruled Savitz would have to check into a locked psychiatric ward if he were to post bond. Savitz would also have to hand over his driver's license, his credit cards, and passport. Iraq is reportedly moving anti-aircraft missiles into the off-limits Kurdish zone in northern Iraq and has tracked Allied flights on radar. 
Under the terms of the Gulf War ceasefire, Iraq may not send its military north of the 36th parallel. U.S. and British officials say the missile batteries are near the towns of Erbil and Mosul, just north of that line. Iraq's missile raiders have taken on Allied planes in an electronic version of chicken by tracking the planes without actually locking onto them as targets. If the radar locks on, U.S. officials warn, a pilot would have to make a snap decision on whether to flee or fire. Pentagon officials say they are tracking the missile movements. Meanwhile, United Nations inspectors are demolishing a giant Iraqi nuclear complex just south of Baghdad. Iraq had claimed the complex was for civilian purposes. And just ahead, some new techniques for the cutting edge of medicine. A report on how you can benefit if your surgeon plays video games. Stay with us. almost two hours. Tom. He was uh, just going to the store, wasn't he? You know, Kevin. He does this every time. Mm -hmm. He's your brother. Well, you gave him the keys. The Toyota Celica, rated by brothers-in-law everywhere, is their favorite car to borrow. I think I see headlights. Sorry, sir. It'll be there any minute. What was that again? At Marriott, our priority is you. So your breakfast is guaranteed on time, or it's on us. Service. The ultimate luxury at Marriott. From the Far East to Europe. the Caribbean and throughout North America only one airline covers so much of the world with so much warmth how many times I told my dad to see a doctor he was stubborn but the pain in his stomach just wouldn't go away he had to go you should have seen the relief on his face when the doctor said my Lanta. He said it was indigestion. And his kind of indigestion needed strong medicine. My Lanta is strong medicine. Strongly recommended. In fact, my Lanta is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said my Lanta. A couple of shots of whiskey can do more to relieve cold symptoms than antihistamines. Medical experts told the House panel today antihistamines work well for allergies, but there's really nothing to suggest they work against cold. One researcher said the risks outweigh the benefits because antihistamines can make you drowsy. Another suggested that when a cold sufferer does want to sleep, whiskey would give the same effect more cheaply. He added, though, the best thing he's found for cold so far is chicken soup. Some doctors get kidded about the amount of time they spend on the golf course, but now they're being urged to play games, games of a different sort, video games. Ken Ford explains why. At first glance, it might look out of place. Doctors playing video games between surgeries. But these men are sharpening their skills, using this game to prepare for another day of real-life video surgery. Thanks to a tiny camera, doctors can now see and cut inside abdomens and chest cavities and other areas of a human body without the major surgery that was once required. Uh, you insert the camera into the belly button of a patient and through this camera you get an image which is transmitted to a high resolution television. TV surgery is used to remove appendixes and kidneys, explore lungs, repair carpal tunnel damage, and even perform a number of gynecological procedures. This year, doctors will use video surgery to remove more than half a million gallbladders, 80% of the total. 
gone are long scars. Most such procedures require just two to four incisions small enough to be covered by band-aids. The advantages can be more than cosmetic. Patients tend to suffer little post-operative pain. Recovery and discharge from the hospital can be quicker. With TV monitors becoming standard equipment in operating rooms, video games are also becoming standard fare for training. Well, as you know, when you work on the video game, your hands move while you're looking at the television. Uh, the result of what you're doing, you know. The same thing with the uh, laparoscopic or endoscopic surgery. This is the instrument, a tiny camera attached to a scope used in the laparoscopic procedure. Hospitals say video surgery is the wave of the future, but as more and more patients are discovering, for them, it's the surgery of today. 71-year-old Betsy May underwent video surgery for a diseased gallbladder less than two weeks ago. Instead of the usual week in the hospital, she was released in two days. May and her doctor say her recovery has been good, nearly pain-free, and quick. But the surgery was not what she expected. Now he was going to play with the video and then look at me and not touch me, you know, with his hands or anything. Now that was surprising. And it's estimated the average video surgery procedure can save you about $1,000. Ken Ford for CNN Detroit. News from Medicine is brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb Company, makers of Excedrin PM, headache medicine, and it helps you sleep. A night for Excedrin PM. This was no day to be me. It's my night! Someone had to tell you. Termites. They said no spouses, so. So I can't sleep and my head aches. You want Excedrin PM, strong aspirin-free headache medicine you can feel good about, plus a gentle second ingredient to help you sleep. So turn off the day with Excedrin PM. And rest assured, it's aspirin-free. Tomorrow, their college experience included protest and social cause. 25 years later, what keeps them going? The class of 66. Where are they now? Sonia Live, 1 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow on CNN. Smelly, rotten mildew stains? Try X-14. It's better. Compare three sprays of Tylex to just one spray of X-14. In minutes, the X-14 side is cleaner. X-14 mildew stain remover and X-14 soap scum remover. My best invention yet, 2,000 flushes chlorine clear tablet. Drop one in. It's the first chlorine tablet to help bleach away stains in your toilet up to four months automatically. New 2,000 flushes chlorine clear tablet. Fleshman's Margarine asks, what is good? Oh, that's good. Real good. And that, that's very good. Fleshman's, of course, that's good. And when you look at that, mmm. -hmm. Oh, there you go. That's better than good. <laughs> oh, boy. Fleischmann's Margarine. Have you been good to yourself today? Hmm, <laughs> that's good. Fleischmann's, be good to yourself. Time now for Newsnight Sports, and Vince Cellini joins us with everything. A little smorgasbord of sports. We're okay. going to try something different tonight, so write us and let us know what you think. Yes, there were a number of games. No, don't write, don't write me. Write Jonathan. Both baseball and basketball on the schedule tonight. We at CNN Sports dare to be different. Rather than tally up the humdrum night of scores, which are already yesterday's news, we put a sports twist on things, present this montage of video, which includes highlights on and off the field. You'll see what we mean. We are going to start with some golf. Steve Elkington at Augusta National. It's not like walking on water, but I'll tell you, it's the next best thing at this unforgiving course. We'll see if he's ready for play on Thursday. Take another look. It was pretty. Uh, John Smoltz pitching for the Braves now in Houston. Second inning in a scoreless game. Steve Finley singles to center. Part-time Falcons cornerback Deion Sanders picks it up and nails Ed Tobinzi at the plate with a throw. Braves won that game 3-1. to one. The Expos and Pirates playing in Three Rivers Stadium. Delino DeShields of Montreal is facing Zane Smith. DeShields drives one to deep center field. One of the best center fielders in baseball, Andy Van Slyke, cannot catch up to the baseball. And this is trouble for Pittsburgh. The Shields around second. He is going to be waved home. And one of the more unusual home runs or plays in baseball, the inside the Parker for Delano De Shields. Yet the Pirates won the game 4-2. to two. Basketball. Pacers, Milwaukee at the Bradley Center. Detlef Schrempf is the guy to watch. The backdoor reverse alley-oop basket for the Pacers star. Indiana grilled Milwaukee 122 
the 107. That was the Bucks' 10th straight loss. And, well, some of the stuff, as we said, off the field <laughs> between periods in Washington, New Jersey. Well, a future NBA star, perhaps. Look at that ball handling. This kid is ready for the pros. I'll tell you what, you got to like him. But uh, I'd say a little youngster who shared the spotlight at halftime, this young lady, simply a halftime sensation. She was magic to watch. Just look. <laughs> you know, Paula Abdul got her start that way. Uh, that little beauty is the perfect way to end this segment. We hope you enjoyed it. A reminder, join Bob, Lorenz, and me for Sports Late Night, 11.30 Pacific Time. We'll squeeze more highlights into that half hour. Now here's Jonathan Mann. Thanks, Vince. Only my enormous professional regard for Karen McGinnis prevents me from describing her as another little beauty for our broadcast, but here she is with a look oh. at the weather. Karen? Well, actually, we've got some interesting weather, which is dancing across our weather pictures. That was a nice video, though. We are looking at some strong storms across the southwestern corner of Oklahoma. Straight line wind damage. 50 mile an hour winds reported with uh, some of these thunder showers. Also, a few rain showers are moving across the upper Mississippi River Valley. Thunder showers reported at Chicago's O'Hare Airport, also Grand Rapids, Michigan. North Platte, Nebraska is picking up a pretty good uh, rain shower at this hour. So is Milwaukee. We have a fetch of moisture which is moving in from off the Pacific and over the next several days. This will increase the activity across Northern California, Oregon, as well as Washington. It's raining at Portland, Oregon, also Boise, Crescent City in California, Hillsboro, Oregon, and Idaho Falls, where you're also seeing some gusty winds. And what you don't see on our satellite picture, in Hilo, Hawaii, they are picking up some fairly heavy rain. And coming up for the Thursday forecast, you could see on and off again showers across most of the uh, Hawaiian island chain. High temperatures for Seattle, 53 degrees, and bring your umbrellas. But nothing but sunshine for Los Angeles in 77. Denver, a great day. 75 degrees. Miami with 84. Chicago, it looks like the rainfall will be moving out, but pushing across the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. And for Chicago, partly cloudy skies, 54. Dallas, close to that 80 degree mark. And here's a forecast map as we move into Thursday afternoon. It looks more complicated than it in fact is. We've got back-to-back -back weather systems, a kind of sandwich between these two weather makers. Maybe a few thunder showers still may rumble around across the Arklatex and through Oklahoma and Arkansas and southern Missouri. And it looks like late in the day, Philadelphia, Buffalo, New York City will watch out as you begin to head on home during the rush hour traffic because it looks like the rainfall is going to materialize there. Finally, an area of low pressure does move on shore, and that even produces more rainfall into Friday morning. Some of the coastal areas, according to some of the computer models, suggest you could see between one and two inches of rainfall. So drive carefully there and watch out because the rainfall is not ending Thursday or for Friday. It looks like it's going to be a, a long-term situation, a long-term rain event. The southwestern corner of the United States, nothing but sunshine, and we, in fact, may start to see a few more 90s creep up into the forecast over the next several days. I'll see you in Azusa. It continues now with Jonathan. Thanks, Karen. The central bridge over the Ohio River at Cincinnati was strong enough to carry traffic for almost 100 years. Only explosive charges could bring it down. Explosive charges and construction crews brought it down to make way for a new bridge that will link Ohio and Kentucky. Transportation officials said it had become too weak to support traffic. Well, we go out with a bang, but stay with us. Bill Clinton and Jerry Brown are changing strategies. We have all the details coming up on Inside Politics 92. I was already late for my meeting when my flight landed. Lucky for me, someone left a courtesy call. I had to get the dollar in a car fast. I knew they were right on the airport with low rates. Welcome to Dollar. Hello, I have a car rental reservation. No problem. I'll just punch it up on the computer. Dollar Rent-A-Car is right on the airport, right on the money, with unlimited mileage and locations worldwide. Call your travel consultant or Dollar at 1-800-800-4000. My father grew up in the Depression. I grew up in the 60s. He fought a war and, and I didn't. All we ever saw in each other were one of the differences. I think we fought because we believed there'd always be time to take things back, make things right. 
I think now's the time for me to do that. Can't read without your glasses? Does this look familiar? If you are one of the many people who need reading glasses, then you also know the embarrassment of forgetting them, or the cost and frustration of losing that expensive pair. Now you can always be sure of having a pair of reading glasses with you at all times. Introducing Extra Eyes, reading glasses that fold away into a convenient small pouch. Extra Eyes are made from high-grade optical material, hard-coated to prevent scratching. They can be adjusted to fit anyone, comfortably and snugly. And best of all, they can be used anywhere, so you can always have your reading glasses with you. And Extra Eyes will work for anyone. Just move them up or down your nose to adjust the magnification. Extra Eyes comes with a special pouch and with the attachable ring that works on keychains or on your purse. And if you call now, we'll include this bonus velour drawstring pouch. For rush delivery of your Extra Eyes, use your credit card and call 1-800-257-1257. Or send $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to Extra Eyes, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia.